Hello, my name is Tom Stiles, and this is Tom's Radio Room Show number 252. What you're looking at is my new, new WRTH book for 2014. This is a, a reference book for shortwave listening that comes out every year. I did a review, an extensive review, of the 2013th version in show number 114. So if you want to go back to 114 before review for watching this show, please do so. And like I say, I go in more depth um, into this book. And this time this is just going to be an update because this is the 2014th version. So I'm going to surely kind of show you the differences. But anyway, if you're not familiar with this book, this is the World Radio TV Handbook the directory of global broadcasting. So it's got all kinds of information about shortwave broadcast, about AM broadcast, about TV broadcast, and all kinds of details about that. So we're just going to go into the book real quick. And we're going to start here at the beginning, of course. And they usually have some articles up front. And there they give credit to and talk about the people who contribute to this book. And then they have a section on um, shortwave radios, listening to shortwave radios, and other kinds of radios too, not just shortwave. And they have updated this section, of course, and have some of the latest radios that are available. Give you a quick overview and talk about the features of H Radio. This is the new Com Radio CR1. It uh, it's kind of expensive. It's about six hundred dollars. And then they have the Fun Cube dongle. Now this is similar to. Let me do a little zoom in here so you can see what I'm showing you a little better or try to see. Um, this is similar to the TV dongle that um, some people have come up in with some software to make it usable for a wideband scanner. And this one uh, is very specific to um, amateur radio, for instance, and people who listen to amateur radio. Again, like the TV dongle, it only works, this one only works uh, 64 megahertz to 1.7 gigahertz. The TV dongle that I did a review of, it works from 30 megahertz on up. So that's a, it's a detailed review of that. This is the latest and greatest scanner by AOR, their AR6000. This is a Cadillac. This is retail price at $6,500. So if you're really into listening to all the bands, I can't, let me see if it tells me, I was trying to see quickly if it tell, told me exactly what bands it covers. Because I don't know, I don't know if it goes down to HF or not. But anyway, this is a good review of that. And then here's uh, another, it's an SDR, but it's it's a card that goes in your PC. It's called a Win Radio. Again, this is very expensive. The software that comes with it is terrific. This is $5,000, so another kind of expensive radio. Here's a portable radio by AOR, the AR8200D. I think the 8200 has been out for a while, and this is the D version, and they're basically telling you about the upgrade that has taken place in this. This is um, an antenna analyzer, the UKITS FG01 antenna analyzer, so that's something a little different there. Um, then it has an article on the history of shortwave broadcasting 
kind of gives you a little history of shortwave broadcasting, and of which I'll talk about another book that gives you a history of broad, uh, shortwave broadcasting, and it's extensive. I'll get to that in a few minutes. And as I got some ads, and here's an uh, article on broadcasting in Sri Lanka. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly. And a bunch of other articles about different things. And then a bunch of other ads. And then here's the um, HF broadcasting reception conditions expected for 2014. This is very useful. Plus, this table over here is a table of the most suitable frequencies for 2014 by area of where you're listening and by what you want to listen to and by uh, segments of time during the year. So that's a very useful chart. And there's extensive um, information on how to use the following charts because the, each of these charts that are following these following the next few pages have got a ton of information and like I say if you go back and watch my other video uh, I try to explain all the information they provide you well I try to <laughs> what do you expect Some more advertisements now here's something that's kind of interesting to me is this this is a, the next couple of pages are maps of the world and where the major broadcast stations are. <clears throat> Excuse me. And you will notice if you have an older version of this book, last year's, year before even, <clears throat> the number of stations on these maps is really diminishing. That's because international broadcasting on shortwave is diminishing. But here's something that's interesting I saw. Look at South America. South America is increasing. And I know when I um, use my automatic tune and storage feature of my Gordon 750, the majority of stations that it finds during that scan, are, I think, are coming from this area because it's all... Spanish speaking stations. Uh, China, India, still pretty good number of stations. Unfortunately, I don't think it, let's see if it shows. No, I was trying to see. Where is, oh, here's Russia. Unfortunately, Russia is going to start turning off their stations this year, so that's not good. Voice of Russia. <clears throat> then it gives you a, a map of the timetables and a chart of timetables. Nothing new there. And then um, the next few sections are details about different radio stations. National radio stations, meaning United States, uh, international radio stations. And then there's a whole ton of frequency lists to go through to find a station. There's a section on uh, television, trying to DX uh, long distance received television stations, and then there's some reference tables in the back, which I'll go to that. And I'll, on the way, so here's just here's tons of information. I know you can't see it very good on my webcam about all these locate. This is by location and all the stations and the frequency and from the programming um, how to how to contact the station if you want to get a QSL card from the station documenting that you did a reception report and then in the back it's got some indexes um, in this case by country to where do you find the information back in the book and I think this is the section on TV yeah that's well I saw, I saw something this is uh, I know it just notices I just picked one here and it's now got I don't remember seeing this before it's got under each city 
It's got systems. And it's got the TV dongle that you can use to listen to uh, this TV station. And like I see, I think this is the TV section. And let me go back to the... Yeah, see, it doesn't have that feature or category in the regular broadcast bands, the shortwave band. But in the TV stations, yeah, this is the TV section. It tells you what kind of system they're using. And if you got one of those TV dongles... And I know there's um, uh, there is a uh, let me back up. Originally, those TV dongles were made to receive television broadcast, and they were re they were made to receive television broadcast over in other countries than the United States because they the other countries use a different format. The United States does. Plus, now the United States has gone all digital, so you can't use it anyway. It's not analog. And um, so there is a, so that's what the original software that comes with the dongle um, is, it does. It, it tunes in those TV stations. Well, <clears throat> apparently it doesn't do it very well, and it may not be applicable. But I saw also that somebody, an individual, wrote some software to receive these long-distance TV transmissions. Now, the one, well, I won't spend too much on time, but anyway, that exists. So anyway, that's kind of the update on the um, WRT, let me zoom back out, WRTH for 2014. <clears throat> if you don't have never gotten one of these books, you need to get one of these books it's because it's a great reference for shortwave listing. It gives you all kinds of details. I mean, just... And it's all in this one book. And it just, I mean, this thing is thick, you know, and it's, and it's got small print, so it's it just got a ton of information. So if you've never gotten one of these, I think you should get one. If you have one of these, um, a recent one, say you got, say last year you bought the 2013. There are updates to this. Like I say, there are articles, uh, review articles on radios and stuff like that. The data in the back has been updated. As I mentioned, a lot of these stations are going away. So you can go in here and say, hmm, that station. No wonder I can't get that station. It ain't there anymore. It's gone. So you might want to get an update for 2014. Uh, one thing that I was kind of disappointed in, I'll back up here a minute, is, uh, whoops, I went too far, is the reviews of Equipment, radios, and and the like, and why can't I find them? Oh well. Ah, yeah, this section here with the radios, and here's a piece of test equipment. I wish they would expand this more. Um, I'm not really myself personally too interested in these articles up front, uh, or in a, maybe just pat yeah these articles. I could read that on the internet, and it's only one or two articles. I would rather have articles on the equipment, radios, the test equipment, whatever. So I wish they would expand this a little more. It used to be many years ago, there was a lot of information. And partly because I think they had uh, some competition, and there was, there was another book like this one that did... The same thing, except they had lots of reviews of radios and equipment. So I think since they have quit publishing their book, I think they just don't spend as much time on reviews and radios. So anyway, that's that book. Now the next book I want to show you is kind of just the opposite. Let me get it out here. And it's called Broadcasting on the Short Waves from 1945 till today, which I think is like 2000. Well, let me see. I guess I don't remember. 2008. So it's 1945 to 2008. And it's written by Jerome Berg. And he wrote, I think, three of these books 
The one I reviewed before was um, shortwave listing, basically. So it was from the standpoint of um, listening to shortwave, what to listen to, how to listen to it, stuff like this. This book is, and, and I would consider that other book a reference book. This book I would consider a history book, the history of broadcasting on shortwaves from 1945 to today. Because it just, it goes in um, sections of time. Like, uh, for instance, here's 19, and again, I'll zoom in, that'll help a little bit. Yeah, this, is ni this section is 1950 to 1959. So it talks about uh, broadcast stations during that time frame and what was going on during that time frame frame as, as far as uh, shortwave radio and then it's got a lot of uh, a lot of pictures of ma mainly these are pictures of QSL cards that were received by the author but if you're interested in the history of shortwave radio over the years this is a very good book but like I say this is not a reference book in the sense that tells you the history of shortwave and not the technical details about shortwave. So again, um, this is you know, it's very thick. Lots and lots of pages of stuff. And really, he does an excellent job of covering the history of shortwave over the years. So if you, like I say, if you're looking for the history of shortwave, this is an excellent book. If you're interested in what's going on on shortwave today, what's out there, who's broadcasting, where they're located, and all that stuff, this is a book to get. So that's the show for today. If you have any questions, please leave a question. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.